Friends! Friends, the night is a night of glad tidings. Oh, we have come a bit far away, have we not? Has it not been just three years since our great baron, Philip, was struck down? Leaving only his nephew, Roderick, to rule in his stead. Now I know there are you who say that Roderick doesn't have a proper claim to the throne. But his marriage to his cousin, Melia Lane, though she herself having no proper title, does give credence that their child, the one who is yet to be born, will be a proper member of the family, and thereby our proper baron. Which is why the night's such a glorious night, for the night is said the Lady Elaine has gone into labor, and will be producing the finest air by morning's dawn. So folks, let us lift our glasses high, and give praise to Lady Elaine and the Baron, and the future Baron who to be born. What you've just heard is an example of the Rule of Three. The Rule of Three says that when you're trying to sell a concept or idea, it needs three supporting elements to support it, to create it, to create that idea. You don't believe me? Well, listen again. Do you hear the sounds of the fire blazing in the fireplace? How about the sound of the bard's song? How about the crowd murmuring? All by themselves, each thing is just one element. It could be in a market, in a church, anything. That song could be sung out by the riverside. That fire could literally be a house burning down. But taken all together, now we have an idea of a bard playing music in a crowded inn. And that's what the power of three is. So whenever you create an idea, a concept, you want to do, you want to create three supporting elements. Three ideas that come together in order to create and sell that idea. Still not convinced? Well, let's take another example. Let's say you wanted to communicate that the head of the guard is really into horses. I mean, he loves them. Now, if you said something simple like, you see a man walking towards you with horses emblazoned all over his armor, well, they might assume that that's his coat of arms. If he came up riding on a very nice horse, well, that just might be coincidence. But if he came riding up on a very, very nice horse, wearing horse emblazoned armor, and got off his horse and proceeded to ask you for the next 20 minutes about your horses, discuss them in detail, tell you which breeds they were and what treats they enjoy the most, and then invite you back up home to visit him and the wife, the old mare, back at the stables, you get an idea that he's into horses. You see, it takes three details to sell an idea. Once is happenstance. Twice, coincidence. Three times, conspiracy when you put down three supporting details and sell that idea. Basically, your rule of three supports your rule of one. Now let's try again. Let's listen to the Bard's story. We have a young Baron Roderick who apparently doesn't have proper claim to the throne. We have his cousin, Lady Elaine, who also cannot claim. But we have a third idea. They're having a child tonight, and that child will put all doubts to rest and become the proper Baron. Three ideas, three concepts coming together. Three ideas to sell a point. And past, present, and future. So, let's ruin their night. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot an adventure around this idea. And we're gonna use it doing just three scenes because as we said, we need three in order to sell a concept. So, we're gonna go with the bare minimum we need. We're gonna start off the first scene is gonna be in a prison cell. All the players are there that evening and they've been arrested. There's a party going on. The Baroness Elaine is about to give birth and everyone's celebrating. Players will be marched in one by one and they will explain to the rest of the players how they got arrested and for what. After the jailer, you know, deposit them, seem very upset, he'll basically mention the fact that there's a lot going on. He's having to arrest multiple people. And with that, having a second jailer come to get him and inform him that there's some kind of riot going on down nearby. And they have them both run out. It's a good moment of RP and gives them a time to have some fun. Also sets the basic scene. We now know that it's the night of the party, the Baron's son is being born, and when he's born, there will be no question at all who the Baron is. 
So let's uh, sell this in the jail cell. We need some details to really sell what's going outside. So we know there's a party going on, so we'll have the sounds of a crowd murmuring or celebrating. There's a feast being done. They can smell the smells of food cooking. And they can hear the sounds of fireworks being launched. I mean, it's a big party. People are really celebrating. How about in the cells? 3D details. So it's a dank, dirty kind of cell. It's a dirty kind of jail. It's not really a prison or a dungeon. It's just the kind of place they keep you temporarily while you're drunk. The uh, wooden walls and metal bars. And a couple drunks with stashed in the corner. For NPCs, we're going to have one NPC. His name is his name is Phil, for facilitator, because that's what he's going to be in this adventure. Phil is going to start out by telling the players why he's in jail, and he's going to ask them one, one by one why they are in jail, just in case they don't volunteer it themselves. More importantly, Phil is going to tell you that he is a sailor, and he's going to let them know that his boat is at the docks and ready to go. And if it wasn't for or wasn't for getting arrested, he would be on his way out of here right now. He'll also tell them about, about the Lady Elaine and the celebration and what's going on. Three big details. There's a boat nearby to get out of here. The Baron is having problems and a new Baron is being born. And all the parties going on because of it. Let the jail scene continue for a little bit and let them have fun being in jail. If they want to try and escape, go ahead and let them try right now because the second they're going to want to escape because we're going to light the jail on fire. How they get out, that's really up to players. If they want to look for key rings, put one on the wall. If they want to try and bed in the bars, let them try. And if they want to kick the boards out of the wall, whatever they need to do to get away, make them make some rolls. Don't make it easy. At the same time, um, I wouldn't burn them alive if I were you. It'd be a terrible way of starting the game. With that, now they're outside in town and all hell has broken loose. With that, we're moving to the beginning of scene two, Utter Chaos. They get outside and they see that, three details, things are on fire. People are screaming and running through the streets and there appears to be fighting going on in and around the keep. The players have a decision to make. The town is being ransacked. They have a choice, either one, they can try and escape on their own. Number two, they can go with Philip, who at this point is going to basically mention he's going to get on his boat and get the heck out of here. Or number three, they can basically decide to actually try and stop all this and head right to the castle. In any case, uh, we're, for this scene, it's all going to be in the streets. The, uh, every place the players go will basically be alley fighting and street fighting. People will be on the roads throwing things. They'll be attacked by random ruffians and guards. For that, we only need three different kinds of villains. Random thugs, city guards, and the revolters. Anything else, we can make up on the fly. But those three we're going to put together. We're going to end the scene with the players running afoul of a uh, group of guards who are currently being surrounded by a group of revolters. They're defending a group of servants. One of the servants is someone the players know, and she screams for help. Now, whether the players decide to help or not, it doesn't matter because a couple of the revolters will come after them anyways. You see, once they take care of these revolutionaries, the uh, remaining living guard is going to basically beg them to get the servant girl and their friend out of town as quickly as they can. They take them and put them on the barge to get out of here. Why? Well, he claims it's the right thing to do. What's the real reason going on? It's Lady Elaine, mother of the child, is giving birth right here in the streets, and they're trying to evacuate her before she gets killed by revolutionaries. Whatever idea they had, they now have another solid idea. They can help Lady Elaine get the heck out of here and get to the boat, which they may already be going to themselves. But if you need to, mention it says there should be a big reward. Scene 3. The players march across the city, fighting more ruffians and thugs along the way. I recommend one or two encounters before you get there. When you get to the uh, docks, you see that several boats have already taken off. There's groups of guards who are guarding the docks itself. And there's the captain of the guard, who sees you guys come up, and he's not concerned about you at all. Instead, he's very concerned about the ladies. As soon as he sees the uh, servant girl, your friend, he uh, demands to know what she's doing here. And then when he, she reveals that the lady with her is Lady Elaine, he will insist that he will take charge of her himself personally. In case you're curious, yes, he's on the take. He's going to be our second NPC. 
His name will be will be Blaggard. Blaggard is boisterous, stubborn, and let's face it, kind of a jerk. He will instantly insult the players and feel that they are beneath him in every way, shape, or form. And seems to be really concerned mostly about holding the docks. But mostly he's concerned about making sure no one escapes who shouldn't escape. So when Lady Elaine tries to escape, he's there to help her. If the players are smart and make some insight rolls or just realize that this guy's up to no good, great. If they don't, have Lady Elaine reveal that he's up to no good. Either way, break the ruse right there and there in front of them. Blackguard basically realizes he's been caught, pulls his sword, and calls his men to take no prisoners. Everyone to the sword. That includes the woman who's about to give birth. With that, your players have a chance to be big damn heroes and have a big old fight on the docks. Or maybe they want to take off and get on the boat and get the heck out of here by themselves. It's up to them. Either way, this is the final scene. Your players now have a story they can tell with a defined beginning, middle, and end. Players start in jail, find out that there's a revolt going on, and get suckered into joining the uh, noble side of the revolt, and end up having to fight off revolutionaries down at the docks. It's a simple event, but that's an example of the rule of three. Three ideas to sell a concept. In the meantime, you now know the one, two, threes of game mastering, literally. Start by creating a big detail and make it stick. Next, create some opposition to give a contrast. Third, what you want to do is you want to create three supporting elements. Three ideas that come together in order to create and sell that idea. Now you have the ability to give a world that will feel live and breathing without you having to do a whole lot of work. In the meantime, we're getting ready to take a trip and we'll be posting from the road if possible. We'll be covering uh, three more rules for you, but they're a lot smaller and mostly built off the other three. So that won't be a big deal. They'll probably be in the same video. After that, other things have been requested by players like the dungeon. In any case, good luck and happy gaming.